They faced justice but evaded the moment of reckoning. Lucy Letby, Thomas Cashman, Kochi Salamaj and Jordan McSweeney refused to be in court for their sentencings. Whilst the families of the people they murdered, multiple babies, Olivia Pratt Corbell, Sabina Nessa and Zara Alina, stared at an empty dock. He has given an excuse that he doesn't want to revisit the events he is responsible for. The man who took Zara Alina's life has no spine whatsoever. Jordan McSweeney didn't want to see the CCTV footage that captured what he did to Zara Alina. But eight months on, a new law has been proposed. I was called today by the Prime Minister. He said, I want to deliver this news to you personally. Um, and he said, um, in a very short time, this will be turned around. We saw what happened to Zara and that man should be made to see what he did to her. Judges will have new powers to order criminals to attend their sentencing and face their victims. This includes custody officers being able to use reasonable force to make offenders appear in the dock or via video link. And those who don't appear for sentencing could also face an extra two years in prison if they ignore a judge's order. Aisha Hussein has been campaigning too after the man who murdered her cousin, Jan Mustafa, failed to show for his sentencing. Multiple families will feel today's announcement deeply. The Prime Minister met with one, the family of Olivia Pratt Corbell, who have asked for the law to be named after their daughter. People who have committed awful crimes somehow are able to take the coward's way out and not appear in court for their sentencing and to hear the impact that their crimes have had on the victims' families. I don't think that's right. There shouldn't be an easy way out. And that's why we're going to change the law so that courts can compel these offenders to be present for their sentencing and to hear the impact. In February, we caught up with Faranaz on the day she met with then Justice Secretary Dominic Raab. That day, he committed to looking at the legislation that's been confirmed today. Farah doesn't agree with the idea of using reasonable force to get prisoners into the dock. You know, if they spit at a prison officer, it's a very unpleasant experience. And I think um, our prison officers, um, you know, the human beings, it's a lot to have to do to drag someone in. What was it like to have to, you know, push back against the system whilst grieving? Uh, you know, when I learned of the failings and, and when I learned that he didn't have to attend the courtroom, I, okay, right, here's another fight. Uh, of course, it's, it's draining. It means it, it, it puts a stop to our um, meeting our own needs in our deep pain and um, trauma. Parts of the criminal uh, justice system goes on. Well, joining me now is the KC Kate Bex, who's been involved in many criminal trials, both as a prosecutor and defence lawyer, and is now part-time judge as well. Do you think the idea of two extra years on your sentence is going to make much difference to somebody facing a life sentence? Not to people facing a minimum term of 35 years, or in Lucy Letby's case, a whole life term. So, no, I don't think the prospect of an extra two years is going to make any difference at all to to that category of offender. And how, how do you feel judges will react to the idea of forcing somebody to come, dragging somebody into the dock? I think opinions will vary uh, and use of the discretion will vary, um, but I think judges are well used to exercising those sorts of judgment decisions. So I'm not too concerned about um, the judges, but I think what may well happen is simply that the responsibility is shifted onto the people that work in the prison. And so even if the order is made by a judge uh, that reasonable force can be used, it's then still at the discretion of the prison workers and the, the prison officers, who may well then just say, following a risk assessment, it can't be it's done. It's too dangerous. Exactly. But what's about the impact on the dignity of justice as well? The idea of somebody literally being dragged, kicking and screaming into the dock. Exactly. And I, I know that there are... Some who would say, well, um, anything to get them into court. Um, but I do not relish the idea of living in a society where that happens, where people are manacled and um, hooded and dragged into court physically. 
I also think but it well, takes... Just explain why not, because there will be... There will be. ..victims' families and other people who say, well, why not? If they're the murderers, mm. they should be dragged in kicking and screaming. Because I think that puts the focus on them, and I'd like the focus to be on the victims. At a sentence hearing, the focus ought to be on the victims. Uh, and um, I've seen too many offenders in court behaving in a way that would just aggravate the feelings of trauma and upset for victims, behaving in a way that is disrespectful, by laughing, by joking. Uh, and that is not going to help um, victims. That's going to make their position worse. There, there is a reasonable chance this may not actually happen because of parliamentary time. Exactly. Are you at all suspicious as to why this, of all the problems with criminal justice, is the one being picked on? Can't spend a professional career working in the criminal justice system and not be a little um, worn with these sorts of ideas. So, yes, of course, the uh, announcement, I suspect, is intended to make the headlines go away and the call for, for action to go away, which no doubt it will do. And I think you're absolutely right that there's a very good chance this will, in fact, never happen because there's no commencement date. I mean, what's for more it. important? I mean, if you could change the law on anything in criminal justice, what would you target? The latest figures for the backlog are the worst that there have ever been. And so rather than focusing on putting two years onto a whole life, whole life tariff, I would rather the government focus on actually getting trials underway, getting more judges appointed so that there isn't a backlog of almost 64,000 cases. Kate Bex, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Thanks, Chris. Well, joining me now is Bryn Hughes, who worked as a prison officer for 25 years and had that very experience we've he been hearing about of carrying defendants into the dock. But he also knows all too well what families of victims in court are going through. His daughter, PC Nicola Hughes, was murdered in a gun and grenade attack while on duty as a Greater Manchester police officer. And Bryn saw her killer given a whole life sentence in 2013. Bryn Hughes, thank you very much for coming to the studio. Let's just start by hearing from you. What are your worries about this law change? I think from, from a grieving father's point of view, um, the last thing you want to see and hear is somebody dragged into a courtroom, as, as we've, 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 it's been described, um, kicking, screaming, swearing, um, spitting, you name it, these, time, these people will do these things. And, and if, you're, if you're sat there, you're going through the worst time of your life, the last thing you want to hear is abuse from the person that did it. Mm, because it, it's, it's, all about, it's all about them as well. It becomes a yes. sort of theatre, does it? Yes, it does, yeah. I mean, you sat through the long trial of your daughter Nicola's killer, Dale Cregan. How did his conduct in the dock sort of exacerbate your pain? Uh, it was a bit it's strange, really, because I, I could see it from a different point of view being a prison officer, so I, I expected that sort of behaviour. Um, other family members, they didn't, and, and it disturbed them. It really, it really disturbed how, how, they, how they behaved every day, how, how they felt, and I expected it. I expected a lot worse mm. than what we actually saw. So we, we've just been hearing about, as a prison officer, people have to carry uh, defendants into the dock. Have you or your colleagues been injured doing that? What is, what is it like? I, I mean, I, I've taken part in, in some of those... Um, um, where you have to force them into the door. I've not been injured myself, but I have a colleagues injured in, in the same situation, same scenarios and incidents. Um, and and that, that alone is... It, it's not an easy task. Mm. It, it's not as simple as two people or one person taking hold of a, a very violent prison. I mean, I think what we've got to remember is these people have committed some of the most horrendous crimes and, and yeah. they don't think twice about killing somebody or injuring somebody. So it's not as simple as taking hold of their arm and... and carrying them into, into a dock. It takes a lot of um, resources. Um, right, so lots of officers, basically. Yeah, you're, you're talking a minimum of three officers. Right. One for each arm and one for the person's head. You're talking of a supervisor, you're talking of a medic as well. If it's planned, you're talking of a lot of resources, so it's not it's quite simple. And, and the access to courts, a lot of the old court buildings, the windy staircases, it's not as simple as that. So, so if you were ordered to use reasonable force yeah. to get a mass murderer into the dock to hear a sentence, would you refuse to do it? I, I don't suppose it's a question of refusing to do it, but as, as a team, you'd, you'd discuss the, like the risk assessments, as the last um, guest said, and, and you'd look at how they can get them into the dock, what it, what it means, what, what, what does it take, and I suppose how the, what their behaviour is like when you get them, actually get them into the dock. Mm. I mean, the government says it is responding to calls from victims' families, from Lucy Letby's victims, from the mother of Olivia Pratt-Corbell and so on. Clearly, you have a different view. 
What, what do you think the government's motivation is here? Uh, I mean, I think it, obviously it, 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 I suppose it's a bit of a knee-jerk decision for, for the, the, the sensational stuff we've seen with, with Lucy Lepia and, and her refusing to attend the dock and um, the, the, the guy in Liverpool as well. And it is, I think, I suppose it's that easy fix-all um, answer, but it doesn't fix it all. And, and from my point of view, I've seen um, prisoners hurl vile abuse at families, describe the, you know, the, the victim's last moments. And do we really want to see that mm. in, in a courtroom? What most helped you in dealing with your grief? I suppose knowing, knowing the fact that the person that murdered Nicola was facing the rest of his life in prison. Um, whether he was there to hear it or not, at the end of the day, I knew it didn't change things. It didn't really change what sort of sentence he was going to get and, and, and what would happen eventually. Bryn Hughes, thank you so much for coming into the thank studio. You.